Okay, y'all, this is my ultrasonic cleaner I was telling you about that I clean parts with. Now, I use water in it and um, a little bit of either the must for rust if I'm removing rust or the vapor rust that I'm trying out um, that I showed you just a little bit earlier. Um, I'm going to try the vapor rust today since I started with it. I'm not going to use the must for rust. The must for rust by Crud Cutter, I will tell you, has, is strong. It's got a strong odor. Um, probably a little bit more aggressive to me. Seems like it's more aggressive than the Evaporist. So, I got this ultrasonic cleaner from Harbor Freight and Tool. I think they had a coupon. It, I can't remember the price. It, you know, everything to me is expensive and I'm cheap and I don't like paying big money for stuff. Um, but except my sewing machines, I pay big money for some of my sewing machines. That's different though, right? We've got to have our priorities, correct? Anyway, um, so um, you put your water in here. Um, I'm just going to use my tap water. I've got well water. There's probably a little bit of minerals in here and everything, but you can use distilled water. I use distilled water as well. Um, there is a min mark for the minimum amount of water and then a max mark. I only use, I use over the min, but I just use enough to cover my part. Um, so get it up over the min line. There's this little tray in here and um, it's okay. It, doesn't help all that much, but um, we're just going to do a little few. Sorry for my arm being in the way, but I'm just using a few caps full of the Vaporized. Um, you can use any kind of cleaner in this ultrasonic cleaner. You don't want to use something that's going to sudsy up and make a big mess, but um, side plate, I mean the yeah, the side plate of the machine's going in there. And I'm going to turn decorative side down. It doesn't really matter. Um, the whole um, bobbin wine assembly is going in there. I mean, like I told you, this machine has, um, you know, seen better days. And so I'm not being as cautious as I would with a machine that was older or in better shape. This definitely is an old machine. That's the back plate. Um, so hopefully that'll help it out. Stop motion knob and washer here. Put those in here. So we've got our tension assembly or what I got taken off of the tension assembly in here. There's two really small screws. So when you put small parts in here, if you've got something else that you can stick them in great. Um, I'm just real careful when I fish them out, but I would suggest, um, you know, maybe getting you a little magnetic tray to stick down in there with all your little small parts. I've got one upstairs, but I'm not running up there to get it now. Um, so I just put all my parts down in here, try to just Move everything, and then I'll put the rest of that evaporist in there. Okay. So, there's different cycle times on here. Um, lid only goes one way. So, let's see. Plug it in. And you got to turn it on. Right, got to have it plugged in in the back. The cord comes out of the back. And you set the time. The max time on this is 480. So, I'm going to put it on 480. TC will, um, I believe, is what warms it. I'm not 100% sure. I don't have the booklet right now. But, um, let's go ahead and hit go. And you'll hear it. Okay, so the ultrasonic cleaner just finished a cycle. And you need to be careful because it, it'll be warm and steamy when you take the lid off. 
and you know make sure you got you some gloves that are a little bit heat resistant or you have something that you know you can help lift up the tray you can take pieces out one at a time now remember i have some little tiny screws down in here but i'm not going to take this tray out i'm just going to take one thing out at a time to show you i could take the tray out and put it on the towel over here but so this is the whole bobbin winder assembly and it doesn't hurt to put it in here um you know all um assembled you could take it apart too but you know looks like it it's really really coming along um still locked up you know this way i'm gonna have to give it some oil and um you know work with it as far as turning but i feel like it's going to but definitely still functional spring still working so i'm gonna lay it over here on my towel i'm gonna have to dry it off as you see there's still gunk here surface rust and that may not come off um may have been too much time for this machine sitting outside um there's my stop motion washer set it over on the towel my spring for my tension assembly and if your things don't come as clean as you think they should you can run another cycle on the ultrasonic cleaner um there's my stop motion knob i think maybe some never dull or something like that will shine it back up it's not too terribly bad um Now there's the plate, the side plate. I'm gonna take some, I'll take the steel wool for this up here. Um, and you know, any kind of chroming or anything that was on there, you know, if it's gone, it's gone. You're not gonna get it back. The, the most you can do is get it cleaned up, get the oil and the gunk off of it and try to, you know, mitigate any surface rust. Um, so let's look at the back plate. So there's the back plate. Again, it, it's pitted. You're not going to get this out. The best you can do is to mitigate it, get off what you can, use a little bit of um, steel wool, fine steel wool, and um, polish it. So we should have a couple of there's the little tension spacer there. Some crud can come off there. Probably I'll do that with a little um, one attachment on my Dremel tool or something. Even steel wool might take that too. But that looks a whole lot better. I believe that was completely covered earlier. Um, tension disc should be in here. And I should have the screw for the tension and two small screws, one for the stop motion and one for the tension. So let's see. Sometimes I have to fish. There's one screw there. Pull this out. So there's one screw. That looks like the stop motion screw. Put it on my paper towel. I'll show you my paper towel in a second. And then, like I said, I like to fish for my small screws, but it's probably not, you don't want to lose your small screws. Singer um, screws, you just can't go to the hardware store and find replacements. So there's that from the tension. And I think that was all that I had, yeah. Cause I wasn't able to take off the top plate, that little bell plate on the machine. It's still not budging. So make sure you un unplug your cleaner and then I'll empty this water, but I'm gonna move you over here. What you wanna do again is be real mindful of your small screws, but 
you want to use the hair dryer and you just uh, want to get you want to get everything as dry as possible but I will show you one thing real quick um, before you get this stuff really dry and I'm not going to do it right now but you want to um, you can use your steel wool on it when it's still a little wet and I think that gives good results but I'm just going to go ahead and dry my pieces <laughs> This time you may do some more cleaning and wiping off but like me right now i don't have time to do any more cleaning today and wiping off so like i said this will be like a this project's progressing so it's kind of like you know it took me two or three weeks whatever it was to get the machine unlocked it'll take me several weeks just on and off cleaning a little bit here cleaning a little bit there and um so i'll do my extra cleaning later <laughs> I'm gonna go pick up my daughter and we're gonna run to my grandmother's. I'm gonna help my grandmother with a couple of things real quick. Um, my grandmother's 92, by the way. So she'll be real excited to see me and my daughter and then we get to help her out some things that she needs. your little screws don't let anything happen to them and it's best practice get you a little metal tray little metal screw holder from like harbor freight or the parts store the auto parts store and um, put your little pieces in that and then put that inside the ultrasonic cleaner it won't hurt it <laughs> I've always been one of these kind of people do what I say not as I do so you know a lot of times shame on me right I need to take my own advice <laughs> Again, when you get your parts out of the ultrasonic cleaner, a lot of times they'll still need another cycle from the cleaner. I think some of these pieces could probably take another cycle or two from the ultrasonic cleaner, or you'll need to do some more scrubbing by hand with steel wool, and um, then you'll need to do some polishing, but um, that's not gonna happen today. <laughs> So don't don't get discouraged and uh, with your working you know on cleaning up a vintage sewing machine because you don't have to have it all done in one day just um little bits and pieces at a time as you have time you know we um a lot of us have what um i've heard referred to as adult jobs and so if you've got an adult job and you're working eight hours a day or more you know five to seven days a week whatever it may be sometimes 12 hour shifts whatever it is you work you know, the, the fun stuff like this, you have to get it in when you can. You can't always just do it all at once. So there again, give yourself some grace. If it takes you weeks, days, you know, if it takes you days, weeks, months, whatever, it's fine. You know, little progress is better than no, no progress. But you just want to get these parts dry because if you don't, then the surface rust can take back over if you've got any surface rust. And see, no 
joke. This, this is still terribly, terribly, terribly dirty. And it's a combination of um, grime, gook, yuck, and um, surface rust. And I'm gonna have to work on it more. I mean, I may put this in later on for another ultrasonic bath. Um, you know, it's got some work to be done um, as far as, you know, being able to move. Um, one, of course, this portion is working. However, this portion here is not moving yet. So I'll have to get some oil in there, see if I can move, you know, this little hole right here is your little oil hole. This portion works, so your little um, bobbin, your barrel shaped bobbin can go in here. Um, so if you're not, not sure how one of these works with a shuttle bobbin, I've got a video of a, uh, Singer 28, a crinkle finish I've got, and it's the heart-shaped, as they call it, bobbin winder like this. Shows how it goes. So, this is all I have time for today. And, um, but I hope there is something here that, um, can help you guys out with working on your vintage machines or, um, just... You know, maybe it's just something you're watching out of curiosity and you just enjoy the vintage machines and hope there was something out of this video today that you enjoyed. But if you um, like the video, you like the content, or if, you know, like and subscribe. And then if you have suggestions for other content, if there's something about a particular machine um, on my channel that you're interested in just uh shoot me a request and i'll you know try to shoot a video of what you're interested in and um you guys just have a blessed day and i appreciate you watching again like and subscribe